Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques and this is going to be a video on principal component analysis, analysis with Python. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take um, a data set that has many variables or you could say dimensions if you will and we're going to try to reduce those using a mathematical technique called principal component analysis what it does is that it takes many variables and tries to summarize them in fewer variables without losing too much of the variance and expl explanatory power of the larger group this is uh, frequently done uh, when you have a large number of variables as I already mentioned and you want to reduce those you know for you know computing issues maybe or just to try to simplify uh, the analysis or for whatever reason maybe there's a high correlation between the variables or maybe you're trying to develop some sort of a scale where you have many items and you're trying to, 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 to determine the factors there's lots of different uh, motivations and rationales behind it and we're just going to focus on learning how to do the actual uh, calculation using Python we're not going to get into the theoretical aspects of it this is not a mathematical type video but more of a analysis hands-on approach so this first cell here inside Jupyter Notebook I have some of my code already set up we're going to be using pandas from sklearn in line number two right here we're going to be uh, using uh, sklearn in a PCA in particular PCA that's where we get the principal component analysis from and then in line number three our data is going to be coming from Pi dataset if you are going to be trying to do this at home you will have to install that it doesn't come as a default module uh, when you are using the anaconda uh, version of Python in particular and then we also are going to uh, use the standard scalar for normalizing our data more about that in a second and we're going to make a plot here using matplotlib so I just press control enter and run this and then I'm going to make a, a separate cell here now what we're going to do now is we're going to load our data that's what we're going to do and so uh, we're just going to take this right here I got a few lines of code that I want to show you and so here we go in line number one here we have our actual data It's the pneumon data from Pi data set and we're going to in line number two drop any of the uh, NAs because PCA cannot handle that inside Python and then for this last line number three here where the actual data set has 3,000 rows of data there's nothing wrong with that and Python can definitely handle 3,000 rows of data However, when we make our scatter plot, when we make our actual plot, when we, multi, when we look at the two dimensions, more about that in a second, it looks like a giant blob when you have a lot of data. So again, this is just for demonstration purposes. You probably would not remove data like this in the real world, but because we want to have a visualization that we can actually see something from, we're going to only use the first 200 uh, rows of data. Again, this is not how it works in the real world. Now. For our next one, we're going to have to scale our data now. And this is going to involve using several pieces of information here. Let me go ahead and pull these up for you. So we're going to make an instance of this. We're going to just call it. And so right here, we have our scalar that we're going to, we're going to use standard scalar. This comes right here from uh, our first cell here, this line right here. So we're going to make an instance of this. And then after that, we have to actually scale our data. And so that's going to be done by this little piece of code right here so once you once you make an instance of standard scalar then you have to do a fit transform on it so what I'm doing here is I'm making a new object called DF underscore scaled and I'm calling my scalar function or method whatever they call it and then I'm going to put the actual data frame that I'm going to transform right here inside the parentheses that's what I'm doing now next I'm going to do this I'm going to add this guy right here. Uh, DF scale is going to make a data frame, as you can see, because once it's scaled, it's not a data frame. All right. And so we have to do that as well to uh, make it a data frame for our actual purposes. Notice how I'm reusing the name, but I'm changing the actual characteristics of it a little bit. And then we're going to take a look at the picture. But before we do that, I needed to show you something real quick. DF describe here. I want to show you what the data looks like. And so this is what it looks like right now. So you can see we have a lot of different variables here. And remember that our goal with principal component analysis is to reduce how many of these variables we have. And you can also see that they're all on different scales as well. So some has a mean of 9.89, others have a mean of 0.01. Now, the thing is, is that 
uh, PCA is sensitive to scale. So if they're not measured the same way on the same scale, what's gonna happen is, is that my first variable right here, this guy's gonna have more influence on the results than ones that have smaller values. And so this is another reason why we have to standardize it, which again, this is a common term in statistics. All right, so I wanted to show you that, I forgot a second ago. And so now down here in this, the lowest uh, cell right here, we're going to scale the data. And so like I already said, we're going to first make an instance of this. Then we're going to, of course, uh, make our new uh, scale data called DF scaled using the fit.transform here. And the data frame is right here inside it. Then we're going to put it inside a data frame. All right. And after that, we're going to take a look at it. So you can see the difference like so. Press control enter. And now we have our answer here. So you can see that the values have changed a great deal. So for example, child age, at first it was a mean of 9.89. That has been reduced to like, oh, 0.598 or something. So you can see how the values have changed significantly. Now, one problem we have here is that if you look at the rows, they no longer have the names of the different variables. That's not a, a major deal, but you know, for the sake of thoroughness, we're going to fix that. Now, the way I'm doing this, this is not how you would do it. There's actually a shortcut for this, but you know, you can only show so many tricks inside one particular video before the video becomes 45 minutes. So we're just gonna do this the long way. In other words, I typed in by hand the individual names. So here are all the names. So here we are with our code typed in here. Again, this is the manual way. If we had more than 15 variables, this would not be a practical way to approach this. However, it's possible this way um, for the sake of for the sake of keeping it simple. So now you can see that I have my labels fixed here. Remember, they used to be 0, 1, 2, etc. And so now it's easier to understand what's going on, what each variable represents, in other words. So now we're getting to the point where we can actually start our actual PCA analysis, if you will, principal component analysis. So what we're going to do is we have to tell it how many components we want. For the sake of simplicity, down here at the bottom, we only want two components. So this line of code right here is telling Python that we want only two components. So we have the PCA function here. We tell the number of components and we save this as an object. We're not quite done. There's a little bit more we have to do. We have to actually do the transformation of it, the actual fitting of it. And so now in line number two, you can see right here, I know these terms are kind of esoteric, but again, let's just focus on the main points here. We're making our X variable here, PCA two components, that's what that stands for. And we're doing the PCA dot two, underscore 2C. Two this is our PCA analysis, two components. It came from right up here and we're doing the fit transform method on it. And of course we put our data inside the parentheses. And so once we do all this, we'll have something, but we're not quite done. We have to actually show you what the data looks like. And that's going to come next. So this is what it looks like. What's happening here is that all of our values have been mapped to these two components. So you have the first column represents the first component. That's going to be a zero, uh, the zero array, the zero column, if you will. And then the second column is the first array. We have a zero base index in Python. So, you know, we have these two values here. Now, again, the, the mathematics behind this is really beyond the scope of this video because the video would get very long. But after doing all of the algebra, algebraic analysis and the vector analysis and eigenvalues and all those uh, interesting things like that, we are left with these two values. These two values, these two columns are trying to capture the information that was being presented in the original 15 variables. That is what's happening here. Again, the mathematics is beyond this particular video. You know, we're assuming that that's something you're already familiar with. Now, to move on here, we're now going to see how much of our variance is explained here in these two components. So what's happening right here is this is our original PCA 2C here, and we're trying to use this, uh, this method right here that tells us how much of the variance is explained. And so what it's telling us right here is as follows. The first 
component explains 18%. That's where that 0.18 comes from. And the second component explains an additional 0.12. So that's what that's telling us. Now, it's not too hard to figure out, well, how well are we doing overall here? Well, we just use one more function here and we just tack on here dot sum right here and we get the answer, which is about 30%. We could already see that. So by just using these two components, we were able to explain 30% of the variance. In other words, we lost about 70% of, of the variance or the, or the data that we already had. So we, we would probably need to use more, uh, more components than just two if we really wanted to do a thorough analysis. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to try to plot this. So we're going to plot this and we're gonna take a look at this right here. It's a little complicated, um, but you just gotta kinda of follow along and, and do the best that you can. So let's see if I can show this to you. All right, so we're gonna use matplotlib. We're gonna use a scatter plot in particular. And so here we go. Now, what's happening here? We are using plot.scatter, that's our main function here, and this first part right here represents the first column inside our results. So what it's saying here is that this little colon here means take all the rows, and this is the column, we want the zero column, and then we repeat this right here. We want, you know, this from the same data set, obviously, from the same, uh, from, from the same uh, array, and then we want all the rows, and we want the second column. And then this C here means color it, color it uh, by uh, what by what um, what row was in, wh where it came from. That's what it's trying to oh, trying to tell you. So we press Control Enter, and so you can see how they're separated. So uh, we're coloring it by race, I believe. So race was one of the variables in the the data set. So you can see how you know it's kind of clumped up right here a little bit. There's not much of a separation, but you know, at least the, the yellow stuff is not way over here and the green stuff's not way over here. So there is some sort of a separation happening there. Uh, this is another one of the purposes of um, principal component analysis is to try to see how you can separate things. Uh, that's kind of how it's working out. And so this scatter plot helps us to see how, how things are mapped out here. Now, we, we were able to do this because we only had the two dimensions. We had the, the, the zero, zero column and we had the first column. If we wanted to do something more complicated, like for example, four, this is also possible. However, you cannot plot it like this, at least not with the tools that we're using in this particular video. So let's just see real quick what four components will look like and we'll conclude this video. So you can see right here, I have PCA underscore four C. So I'm gonna have four components and then I'm going to transform my data like so. Press Control Enter and then you can see for yourself if you really desire to. See about that. Press Control Enter and you can see now we have one, two, three, four, four pieces of data here. So we can't map it, but we can figure out how much of the variance is explained by this. So if we put this right here, you know, you can't see it. I'll move down. So you can see here we got 18%, 12%, 9, and then 8, almost 9 again. So it's a, you can see how as you go down, the explanatory power declines. That's normal. So now we're just going to, to uh, do this last piece. We're going to... Hold on, let me insert a cell here. And then we're going to do the sum real quick. And you can see right there, we got about half the variance explained. So as you keep adding more and more uh, components, you're of course going to explain more and more of the variance. And so that's essentially the main components of principal component analysis. So let me see if I can summarize what we talked about and wrap this up. So in this particular video, what we did was is we um, looked at principal component analysis in the use for Python. So we took a simple data set, we shrunk it down for practical purposes so that we wouldn't get a giant blob of, inf of information. And we had to do first, we had to do a basic transformation where we scaled the data, we normalized it, whatever term you prefer. 
so that no variable would overweigh any of the other ones. Now, uh, next right here, what we did here is we actually did the actual component analysis where we broke our, where we took our 15 variables and through some algebraic magic <laughs> that we didn't really talk about, we were able to reduce it down to these two components. So instead of having 15 uh, variables, we, we went down to two. Again, like I said, this is common. Like if you're trying to make a scale, you have 15, 20, 50 items. Well, each item is actually technically a variable, but you want to try to capture that in the essence, maybe into two. That's what you can kind of do right here. And so after we did that, we calculated how much of the variance was explained, a 30% for our two component one, and we plotted it. We plotted it by race. I forgot to mention that race was one of the, uh, one of the variables in the actual data set. And so you can see here how they're able to separate by race. Again, we don't know what colors these represent. That's not the point. But you can see how there's a separation. So as I mentioned before, PCA is not only used for trying for, for scale reduction, but also for like um, the term is like for discriminating <laughs> against or pulling, trying to identify differences between groups, trying to separate them in some sort of a way. And so then we did an analysis where we have four components. And you can see here at the bottom how our variance explained went up much higher by adding additional components. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching and take care.